All right, let's dive right in today. We're tackling trend following. Specifically, this new research paper, does trend following still work on stocks? Yeah, fresh off the press, January 17th, 2025. So is riding those rising stocks still a good idea? Is that the big question? That's the heart of it, yep. And they're looking back 20 years to see if it holds up. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. They didn't mess around, huh? All the way back to 1950 with the data. Every liquid U.S. stock. Had to be thorough. No survivorship bias here. Right, gotta include those companies that went belly up. Not just the winners. Otherwise, it's like, well, everyone wins in Vegas if you only talk to people leaving with cash. Exactly. This gives us the real deal how trend following actually performed historically. Okay, so massive data set. But how'd they pick which stocks to actually trade? Using this trend following, I mean. Ground rules. Got to have standards. First, closing price minimum $10. Makes sense. No penny stock shenanigans. Nope. And volume matters. Average daily volume at least a million bucks over the past 42 days. Adjusted for inflation, of course. Got to be liquid. Easy to get in and out. Okay, so found a stock, meets the criteria. Now what? How do we know when to buy? The entry signal. Simple. Market open, day after it hits a new all-time high. Catching the wave early, right. Ride that momentum. But how long do you ride it, and how do you know when it's over? Ah, the exit. That's where our trailing stop loss comes in. Ten times the stock's 42-day average true range, below its highest price, of course. Okay, average true range. For our listeners who aren't trading every day, break that down a bit. Think of it like measuring how jumpy the stock is, volatile stock, wide ATR, calm, stable, narrow ATR. So the stop loss... It adjusts based on how wild the stock behaving. Exactly. Wider safety net if our tightrope walker is dealing with wind. Love the analogy. I get it. Speaking of wild, the paper mentioned some famous crashes, right? After all-time highs. Oh, yeah. Lehman Brothers, 2008. Enron, back in 01. WorldCom, 2002. And who could forget Lucent in 2000? Big names. Everyone thought they were unstoppable. Here's the thing. It still would have made money on almost all those trades. Hold on. How? Trailing stop loss, remember? Price drop, stop loss follows, locking in those gains. Automatic ejector seat, get out before it crashes. That's the idea. Trend following, it's about surviving the inevitable losses, winning in the long run. I like the sound of that. Okay, so individual stocks got it, but they took this further, right? Built a whole portfolio. Yep, back tested it, 1991 to 2024. Three decades of data. Drum roll. How to do? Average annual growth rate, 15.02%. 15%. That crushes the market. But got to ask the question, I'm sure our listeners are thinking, all that trading, that's going to be a ton of fees, right? Eating into those profits. You're sharp. The researchers knew that was key, so they factored in real-world costs, commissions, and even market slippage. Imagine buying a huge chunk of stock at once. Your own buying pushes the price up. Same when selling pushes it down. So the more you trade, the more these hidden costs take a bite. Exactly. And the initial results. Disappointing, especially for smaller accounts. $100,000 starting capital. Trading costs ate up most of the gains. Ouch. So great in theory, but unless you're a high roller. Yeah, tough to make it work. And even bigger accounts, all that buying and selling, it dragged them down. But they found a solution. Turnover control mechanism, they called it. Turnover control, huh? Sounds fancy. What's the secret sauce? Efficiency, cutting out the waste. First, minimum threshold for rebalancing. So not every day, just when it matters. Makes sense. Like, uh, I don't do laundry every time I have a sock. Gotta wait for the basket to fill up. Exactly. And for those big trades, spread them out over days. Ah, so we're not making waves in the market. Not buying all at once, pushing the price up. Right, and commissions. Gotta be smart about this too. Feet too high for the amount we're trading. Skip it. Like, nah, I'm not paying $10 delivery on a $5 pizza. I like it. So what happened? Did this turnover control thing actually help? Big time. Costs went way down. Even those smaller accounts starting with 100K, now it's viable. Fees aren't eating everything. That's awesome. Shows you don't need to be a millionaire to make this work. But, okay, bigger picture now. We talk stocks, but this idea, 
could go further, real estate maybe, or even like crypto. You're hitting the core of it. It's not just about the what, it's the how. Trends are everywhere, right? Yeah. If you can spot them, ride that wave. But you got to know when to jump off, too. For sure. Real estate, some neighborhoods get hot, prices go up then, things cool down. Trend. Right. Slower than stocks, though. Real estate's not so easy to, like, flip quickly. True. But the principle, could it apply? Finding momentum, knowing when to sell. Yeah, interesting. Even crypto. Crazy ups and downs, but still trends in there. <laughs> Gotta have nerves to steal, though. Oh, yeah. Fast moving. But the point is, the core idea of trend following. Spot the momentum, manage your risk, execute those trades, smart stocks, real estate, whatever. Like a universal market language almost. Yeah. Unlocking how things move. Yeah. Who knew this research paper would lead us here? Right. Started with, does it still work for stocks? But now it's, trends are everywhere. How do we use this knowledge? It's like new glasses, seeing the world differently. We're not just reacting anymore. We're anticipating. Exactly. That's powerful stuff, no matter what you're doing. Starting a business, making art, even just like everyday decisions. Yeah. Understanding trends gives you an edge. Like peeking into the future, kind of. Can't predict everything, but those patterns, those tell us something. That's what we've given you today, hopefully. Not just information, but a new way to think. Tools to analyze the world, make better choices. So as you go about your day, your week, remember those trend-following principles. Look for the shifts, the patterns. They're there. And hey, maybe you'll find a trend of your own to ride. Who knows? This has been awesome. A real deep dive. We started with stocks, but we've gone so much further. I know, right? Hope our listeners are feeling inspired. They wanted trend following, and we really broke it down. How it works, how to manage risk, even those pesky costs. And most importantly, hopefully they're curious to learn more. Apply these ideas. See what they can find. Before we go, remember that quote from Jesse Livermore. Markets are never wrong. Opinions often are. Powerful stuff. Don't try to outsmart the market. Read the signs. Adapt your strategy. And who knows? Maybe this deep dive gave you the tools to start doing just that. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep those minds open. 